Hi, I'm Sophie. I'm a crew member here at Baltic Centre for Contemporary Art, and I'm so excited to be able to introduce you today to Hugh Locke's latest exhibition, The Procession. Hugh Locke was born in 1959 in Edinburgh to a Scottish mother and a Guyanese father. When he was five years old, the whole family traveled by boat to move to Guyana, just in time for independence from British colonialism. So Hugh saw a lot of cultural institutions that had been installed by the British in the country demolished and taken down in the name of independence. This meant that throughout his life, Hugh's been really interested in examining the concept of nationhood, what it means to belong to somewhere, what it means when your nationhood is perhaps you know, made inferior to another nation in terms of colonialism, invading forces, and also who we uphold as a nation, who we see as symbols of our nationhood. Hugh himself has said that if he wasn't an artist, he'd be a historian. But in my personal opinion, he sort of ended up being both. The examination and interrogation of history has actually become a huge part of his artistic practice. So the procession itself was originally a commission for Tate Britain. Uh, Hugh and his team worked on it throughout the lockdowns, and then it opened in March of 2022. It's particularly important that it was commissioned and shown in Tate Britain originally as Henry Tate, founder of the Tate Art Institutions, had a lot of ties to Britain's colonial history. And so placing an exhibition like this in a building such as Tate Britain really gives it that extra historical context, thinking about what it means for a Guyanese artist to have an exhibition of this magnitude in that space. One of the questions we get asked a lot as crew from visitors coming into this space is whether or not any particular part of the procession represents any particular people. You know, is this the Africa section? Is this the Britain section? And that's a really complicated question to answer. The procession is our history, all of our history, all at once. And certain elements, yes, speak of certain nations more, but history, like our people, like the procession, is intertwined. This figure was one of my favourites for sort of ex examining that reasoning and explaining that to visitors. So first of all, we have the horse. The horse is bright yellow and bright pink. These pigments come from India, so, so much so that the yellow was originally known as Indian yellow. The figure on the back of the horse is a proud, upright black woman. When you visit the procession, you'll see that quite a lot of the figures here, they don't have skin colourings, they are cardboard, faceless mannequins, there isn't any particular race that you can pick out. However, this woman in particular is a black woman. That's very, very important. On the turban on her head, we have a medallion representing Columbus's ship. So here we have Columbus, Spanish history. We have African history. Also, those two tie together to bring a bit of American history and the history of the Americas to the fore including India because Columbus, when he sailed, was originally looking for India and didn't quite manage to get there. And so we have Indian history, Spanish history, American history, European history. It's all connected and it's impossible to pick apart from one another. Every element of what happens in this one figure interferes with and changes how the other is seen. So that's what we mean when we say it's very, very difficult to pick apart any individual figure as being from one particular nation. If you were lucky enough to see this piece at Tate Britain, you might notice when you come to Baltic that it is laid out quite differently. At Tate Britain, all the figures of the procession were in a long line running through the central corridor gallery of that space. Here on level four at Baltic, the figures in the procession come from a variety of different directions. We have this central island here, we have figures curving around the left of the room, figures curving around the right of the room, and also a small pocket right at the rear of the space. Initially, having seen it myself at Tate Britain, I was surprised by the different layout here, but the more I thought about it in context of what the exhibition is saying, the more it made sense to me. This exhibition, as I've said, is about our history. It's about who we are, it's about where we're coming from and where we're going. And so the curation of the space here, in terms of how we look at these figures moving forward and how we can move about them, means that when you visit, you become part of the procession, but it also makes reference to the fact that we are all heading towards the same future, even if we are coming from different points and perspectives. One of the recurring motifs throughout the procession 
that any eagle-eyed visitor might notice is prints like these here. And the prints on these pieces of fabric are share certificates. Hugh himself collects share certificates, particularly for companies that are now defunct or have gone bankrupt. What this essentially means is that this piece of paper that once represented how much wealth you had now is basically only worth the paper it's printed on or as a collector's item. He was interested in interrogating who at any point in history had wealth, how they got that wealth, where it came from, what it was used for, but also making almost a memorial to how quickly that wealth can disappear. As well as the procession being a parade of human history, we also have a lot of elements of the Guyanese carnival or bacchanal weaving throughout. Hugh himself has noted that this piece is a little bit autobiographical and you can see that really in a lot of the figures that would be known to any Guyanese person walking through the gallery. Take for instance these tall imposing figures on stilts with huge sweeping dresses, long sleeves, almost guiding the procession. So in Guyana these are known as Mother Sallies or Boom Boom Sallies and these help to lead the way in Carnival, to guide people to act as a guidepost to say, follow me, you're going in the right direction. We have several of these throughout the gallery, put at pivotal points in the rear and leading towards the front as well. Every figure in the procession carries their history with them, whether quite literally or more spiritually, figuratively, in the prints on the dresses, in the clothes and the costumes that they're wearing. With this, Hugh invites us as viewers of the procession, but also as participants in it, as we move through the gallery space, to think about our own history, our place in it, both in terms of nationhood and individually, and to think about what it means to carry that history with us. What parts of history do we retain and what parts do we try to hide? In terms of the overall message of the exhibition, Hugh himself has put it in a way that I think is quite wonderful and I couldn't really say it any better myself. It's that we have to live with hope and we cannot live with misery. We need to carry these things with us in order to not repeat mistakes of the past and to put ourselves in a historical context. However, ultimately, we have to believe that we are moving forward into something joyous and the procession, which blends both carnival it blends memento mori, it blends all of human history, colonialism, celebration, and above all, joy. I think that it is successful in communicating these ideas, and I personally hope that you're able to come and see it.